evening to all uh, it's uh, a matter of great uh, privilege for me to be here today at the TEDx platform and uh, the department of commerce uh, the delhi school of economics for having taken up this uh, important subject of legacy for us all i personally feel uh, it's it's important to you know highlight what legacy means to me and personally when we look at you know everybody's individual experience it may vary from person to person as the speakers before me have also shared their personal experiences i would endeavor to share mine through this uh, interaction today many of you would have thought uh, what do we want to pass on to our children you know wh what is it that we can do and many people in the today's materialistic world think of objects or wealth or estate or certain mementos to be shared with their children however i think it's it's the a day and an age to where i'll not be surprised if if you know somebody really wants to have or own the best sports car in the world or you know some uh, you know, say want a nice property somebody would want to have a holiday and yet if you ask the young children teenagers they even would want you know to sit in a home theater and enjoy you know a popcorn it's it's as simple as that for them so what is after all a life purpose i'm sure you'll agree with me there is much more to it than just enjoying what we have as material objects which please our senses and my personal view on this is that we are mortals definitely uh, you know values and principles that we can actually pass on to our children these are the ones which are immortal and if you look you know our true legacy our true legacy lies in in the today's times of haves and have nots it's it's a it's a simple truth but a lot of people would know it but let, little will be believing in it you know so what is the true legacy after all it is these life and the principles and the values which we believe in and we want to live by which will count in the long run how our children or our future generations would like to live their lives you know and lead their lives in a proper way so if there is a larger purpose in my view if there is a larger purpose then wealth and success are actually nothing but by products you know if you have a larger purpose in your mind now what is the larger purpose is a question and it really depends on individuals how they would perceive and you know understand with time what is their larger purpose after all now if i like to share my journey of life it's been you know i try to in the 18 minutes that would be spending today try to uh, encapsulate everything and share uh, how i would you know put it in terms of phases have experienced in the years that i have led so far it's been of observation it's been of introspection and self discovery that's how i put it because i i feel that you know leaders world leaders like mother teresa or mahatma gandhi for that matter nelson mandela they've had very high virtues in terms of uh, you know uh, the the principles of life that they have exhibited by their and they've kind of passed on to the next generations and the world is following them and i'm highly highly inspired by certain principles like non violence or uh, empathy compassion truth justice and that's exactly why i chose this profession of law so i i i feel that these values are somewhat dwindling in today's world where we are in a rat race but i think they still hold good and with time one comes to realize how important they are and when we see you know each one of us each one of us is unique and i'm sure there is a spark of those virtues inside us which we are just waiting to be discovered and that's how i also understood with time what these values uh, mean and how important it is to pass, pass these to the younger generation today i was fortunate to be born in a family where my parents believe in strong ethical values and when it comes to say gratitude as uh, you know we were talking about gratitude gratitude or for that matter hard work in any stream of life or profession or even pursuing a passion is so important and uh, for i was fortunate you know to be born in a family 
where we believed in a lot of these values and uh, we are trying to now pass on this to our kids a lot of uh, times you know i observed my parents both senior lawyers indra sani and bharat bhushan sani over 40 years of their life they spent in the profession and they did a lot of pro bono work lot of things to give back to society through their legal profession and that's really inspiring it inspired me to also you know take up this profession which has uh, immense uh, i would say you know terms of value which we can add to the society and that that plus the the fact that it was uh, you know the principles of truth and justice that you're actually fighting for people's rights that led me to decide and you know I chose this profession both my me and my brother actually en ended up having you know this uh, profession and i also got married to a lawyer so this profession is at, uh, you know the helm of affairs in our family we have, we have really uh, uh, you know cherished the ideals that we share uh, you know in terms of discussions or in terms of values now uh, if 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 i go back and i see uh, the passions that have driven me is is the key to whatever i've tried to do in in terms of work and i have realized that over a period of time learning for me has been like a river it's been ageless because i started with my law and then i went on to do uh, my llm from kings and then i went on to do my phd even when i got married uh, to amit seth is my husband who is also a leading lawyer and my two children who are now teenagers they both uh, are also you know uh, they were very supportive my in-laws were very supportive because for women especially to make a mark in their profession with so many responsibilities is definitely a challenge and i'm sure uh, whoever is listening to me will agree there is so much more that is required of a woman in terms of family in terms of work life balance and that's what is uh, important you know in this there is a balance in every quarter it's very difficult to have a success in one of the only ways which is the career and over a period of time i realized that you know litigation i did a lot of data theft defamation cases and i'm a cyber crime lawyer i've been doing a lot of litigation consulting while i was doing all this i realized there is something within me that i need to share with the world and that was writing so i started writing a structured way what cyber law is because i had learned over a period of time this field is so fascinating every second day there are a new crime and there are law enforcement teams working to combat cyber crime and while i was on the side of you know consulting and litigation i realized that children specifically were becoming targets of the same women also and people in general and so not only combating this issue was important but also prevention the online safety this became my mission apart from what i do after all i didn't want to just make a living i just wanted to lead my life the way i could you know contribute more and that's what encouraged me to author a book called computers internet new technology laws and then i also went into do my phd on online uh, child protection and then i set up an ngo which is called fire uh, foundation for institutional reform and education where we empowered women children and law enforcement teams uh, you know police officers judges all across india and trained them on how to combat and how to prevent cyber crime that that has been a very satisfying experience for me very fulfilling i've interacted with so many stakeholders and then i got involved with policy making uh, i i worked with uh, you know the uh, policy makers uh, government on how we can curb fake news uh, how we can make uh, you know uh, say file a case from any rural or remote part of india i was fortunate to work on this project called the e courts project where uh, honorable justice lokur he was uh, the chairperson at that point of time the committee uh, on, in the supreme court where we worked on a software and a manual was written by me where we could enable anybody from any part of india to use that software and actually file a case in in the court of law that is something which was again very very important and i felt it was a big uh, leap from because now in the virtual times more and more internet will have to be used 
you know, to connect people and to get uh, recourse, legal recourse. Then I realized that, you know, the trainings with the trainings uh, which I was rendering to the police officers and judges, it is also important for children. So through this NGO, we covered almost 14, 15 states where we delivered uh, online and otherwise a lot of, uh, you know, awareness campaigns. Even during COVID, I remember 40 to 50 webinars we did just to spread awareness on, uh, you know, how do we combat these problems like blue whale with which children are faced, you know, that children are facing cyberbullying. And then uh, there are stalking instances, trolling instances. Awareness on the same and is very, very crucial. And that's what has, uh, you know, really been one of my key missions apart from what I do. Now, rightly, I felt, you know, how I, I could not have envisioned when I was a law student, I'll be doing all this. I think it all happened as I kept thinking that, oh, why not? I should I not do this? Uh, I feel like doing this and I think I can make a difference here. And then God gives you strength to do it. Somehow it makes it you know, time possible because if you're passionate about something, time is at your disposal. That's how I've experienced life. And there have been innumerable challenges and different, different kinds of challenges. However, however, if, you're, if you believe in yourself and if you believe in God, I think it will give you strength to do anything that you want. You will be able to achieve it. And I think rightly said by Mahatma Gandhi, that man is but a byproduct of what he thinks. What he thinks, he becomes. That's how I have, uh, you know, experienced this process of uh, observation, introspection, and then leading on to self-discovery. And I also feel that, you know, I am glad I found my ikigai early. As this philosophy goes, the ikigai philosophy, I'm glad I found it early. Because legacy is not according to me leaving something for someone, but something in someone. After all, one has to be the change one wants to see in the world. I think that is what is important for us because we may lose hope sometimes with a lot of situations around, around us, the rising cyber crimes you would have seen. And every second day, there are new kind of problems. And we have even pro bono helped a lot of uh, you know cases. I remember once a lady had con called us. She was uh, outside uh, India. And she was being harassed and bullied online on social media. Now, their videos had to be removed. The, they had to be taken down. And sometimes in the cyber law and challenges have been very, very uh, different because not always there is a law in place. Not always there is a court also. There is no transport of court, really. So there are a lot of issues of jurisdiction in cyber. So we somehow helped this lady with uh, you know, sending out legal notices. And uh, the websites, uh, registrars and the host companies, they removed this within 36 hours as per the Indian law. And there are, you know, there are those challenges, which court would be uh, something which is a global jurisdiction. There isn't any. And law in India currently is evolving. Though we have the IT Act in place, it is uh, there, but yet there are every day some new problems, uh, new issues. And uh, issues like revenge porn, issues like, you know, uh, fake news as we have it. And uh, with time, the law is also developing. You know, there have been dynamic injunctions given by the Delhi High Court in cases of takedown. Supposingly, there is a pornographic material or some material which is uploaded on the web and it has to be taken down. It, has, it is taken down. Then there's a duplicate entry which comes along another link. So courts are also evolving and there is a dynamic injunction now being granted by the courts to remove that out if there is a similar link which is visible. So uh, this has been a fascinating journey. Being a cyber lawyer, I felt that not only did we, uh, I have learned cyber forensics during this process, uh, not only uh, has it taught me to be more empathetic with people, not only has it also you know, um, taught us to um, listen and uh, analyze more and carve our own way through because there is no um, law which is fully developed. It is like you are the pioneers, you have to lead the way, you have to find your way. And it's a maze. Definitely cyber law is something which is very challenging. We have every single day a new issue and a new case which has its own facts and needs to be dealt with. So I think for me, uh, my legacy and 
and i feel is is uh, really to pass on these uh, values that i firmly believe in truth and justice and uh, i also feel empathy compassion needs to merge and today's generation i think needs to understand to be more patient and to imbibe these principles if we can do this then we will etch you know impressions on their mind which will live much longer than what we would probably by just give, gifting them any kind of you know um, objects which are material maybe not you know life long but if we can give our children a good education with a good moral foundation then that is the best legacy one can give to our children to empower them make them independent make them realize they how important it is to make their own decisions and i think one is to listen and also express and find a middle ground and let them also reason because i believe that freedom of speech is for all whether it is children or adults but one has to have logic and reason and strong foundation of why we are saying something because the what and the how are always looked into you know because it's all external but the why is what remains hidden and that's it that's a challenge for every parent for a, anybody in fact who would want to pass on a legacy so behind everything that we do or we say there is a why and that's what is most important to pass on to your children and to your younger generations and that's my message too thank you